So um, I did just want to say uh, one more thing, uh, particularly because I'm in the North End, um, in response to some uh, constituents who contacted my office. As I said, uh, a big part of my agenda is uh, advancing women and girls. So I work on those issues that disproportionately impact women and girls, like human trafficking, domestic violence, um, sexual assault, uh, looking to eliminate barriers for women entrepreneurs, and advocating for more women in police and fire in the trades. Um, there were a number of young women um, in neighborhoods in close proximity who contacted me knowing of my work on this. Uh, and so a couple of months ago, I convened um, the first annual Raise Your Voice Summit, a day of empowerment for girls and women. I'm a survivor myself. Um, and it was uh, an incredible experience. We pulled together 100 women uh, from throughout the city, uh, many of whom were from the North End as well, um, who were survivors, who were able to sort of get on a pathway to healing, get the tools that they needed, um, but also uh, to uh, have self-defense classes and arm women with that sense of empowerment uh, to ensure um, that we do our part to break this cycle uh, of violence. So I just want to make sure it's an ongoing community conversation and not just on the heels of sort of a headline-grabbing incidents. So is there, I was actually going to ask a question, is there a potential that there could be some, some classes in the neighborhood and of the North End and a string of Absolutely. assaults and we usually we, rise up when the issue comes up? Correct. And what we really need is a sustainable effort. I mean, I think what happens is people sort of um, are impacted by a story that perpetuates this idea that every incident, um, for lack of a better expression, is sort of a boogeyman lurking behind a corner. Um, it's hard enough to think about someone that you love being violated, but even harder to accept that someone that you love could violate someone in this way. But uh, you know, more more times than not, these things are happening. Um, you know, with someone that you know, um, and so we're doing ongoing work around that. We have four workshops. One was for providers, people who work with kids who wanted to know how to identify uh, young people who perhaps have been violated in this way uh, and how to protect them. Um, we uh, partnered with uh, BPD. Uh, and so we, um, we can give you the name of two of our community partners, and we could host with them um, a defense training. It's called um, Rape Aggression Defense. Yeah, so we've been, um, we have a number of people that signed up there. We just did a teaser at the workshop. Um, we couldn't do the whole training there because it's pretty comprehensive. So if you're interested in that, please do let us know. Do you have a question? Um, I just wanted to make a comment. It's sort of interesting. I, I applaud the councilwoman for these missions, and I think it's interesting as I'm discussing something that we have in common, which is our proposal, uh, as opposed to the other proposal, which is seeking three large liquor licenses for a potentially thousand seat bar facility at Parcel Nine. We're proposing something that serves the community and something that makes it safer and more passive. So it's interesting that we're sort of both saying something, and maybe that can be a common ground to this project. Okay. So I want to just mention that. Thank you for raising it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone right. else have any questions? You are welcome anytime. Okay. Second Monday, usually.